Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you very much for logging on and joining us to be a, being a part of, of another Golf News webinar. It's going to be a, an interesting one today because recently we've been focusing on education. We've been looking at schools and we've been looking at universities with this academic year up returning this week. But a bit of a change today. Uh, today we're going to be focusing on second citizenship and Dominica's citizenship by investment program, and in particular just how family friendly it is. So today what we're looking to do is how to bring your family together with citizenship of Dominica. I'm your moderator of the webinar this afternoon. My name is Lachlan Kitchen, but please call me Kitch, as everyone does. I'm an Australian media presenter. I've been in the media for just under 20 years, and I am exceptionally interested in today's topic uh, because I've always, like many of you, had a fascination for the beautiful islands of the Caribbean. When you think about it, you think of the stunning beaches, the crystal clear water, the perfect weather that you have all year round. Who hasn't dreamed of spending a long vacation in the beautiful part of the world? Now, if you aren't aware, Dominica is in the southern part of the Caribbean. It's down near Grenada. And today we are specifically going to be discussing the citizenship by investment program. The reason is this presents a tremendous opportunity for you and for your family due to the importance of family life in Dominica. And one of the things uh, I think that 2020 has certainly taught us with so many places going into lockdown is the importance of family and it's taught us it's not about the material things. Family is what's been important in all of our lives for this year. So joining us today to discuss how you can bring your family together, we do have very two very special guests. Uh, firstly, and it's with great honour, uh, we'll be speaking to the Prime Minister of Dominica, uh, Dr. the Honourable Roosevelt Skerritt, and then we'll speak to the head of the Citizenship Investment Unit, His Excellency Emmanuel Nanthan. Prime Minister, I know it's early in the morning, so thank you very much for making time for us this afternoon. Good afternoon to all of you, uh, and it's my pleasure to be part of this uh, event. Uh, I believe it's a very timely um, topic and discussion, and I look forward to um, engaging yourself on the questions and the points which you may pose to me today. So I'm very happy to be here, and thanks for inviting me. Thank you very much. Now, I know our ambassador uh, is in, so we're, we're looking forward uh, to speaking to His Excellency uh, Emmanuel Nathan, who is the head of the Citizenship Investment Unit. Uh, but to you, the Prime Minister, uh, the question, the Commonwealth of Dominica is known as a country that values family. And with many domestic units composed in Dominica of extended households with several generations, how is this reflected in Dominica's citizenship by investment program? Well, well first of all, uh, the family is at the centre of the Dominican society. Um, we have been known for a very long time up to this point of having a very high presence of extended family arrangements. Uh, so you have uh, sometimes great grandparents, grandparents, parents, children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, all living in the same household. Um, and we also have the nuclear families. Um, you have communities uh, where everybody is related, you know. Um, so, so, so the issue of family is, is very important to us. And it, this is, it is for this reason that we have also brought this on board in our CBI program, uh, recognizing that in many parts of the world, especially in the, in, in the Middle East and in some parts of Asia, um, you have the same family structures. Um, people, people look out for each other. Uh, people um, take care of the family, the, the parents and grandparents in a very admirable manner. And so um, having consulted with a number of stakeholders in the marketplace, including prospective applicants and all of people, also people who have become citizens. Um, we have our marketing agency as global. We have um, developers and, and, and promoters engaging in, in, in discussions as to how can we enhance this CBI program? How can we um, uh, make it more attractive to our prospective um, applicants? But also how do we uh, reach out to these families to ensure that we can keep families together and, and not let people believe being part of a family is a bad thing. It, 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 you know, and, and so there are certain benefits which come and there are certain benefits which don't come. And, and so in our, in our CBI program, 
recently we made some changes to it. And, and I just want to draw to your attention some of the changes which we made uh, to the TBA program where the family is concerned, if you allow me. Uh, for example, one, any dependent can be related to either the main applicant or the main applicant's spouse. Uh, two, uh, we impose no age limitations on parents and grandparents. Uh, three, for all adult dependents, other than a spouse, there need only be a showing of substantial support on the part of the main applicant or the spouse of the main applicant, where previously we required full support. So previously we required full support, now we just need to show um, substantial uh, support. Uh, uh, four, we allow siblings up to the age of 25. Uh, but we are also cautious that for any sibling who is a minor that is under the age of 18, consent must be granted by the parents. And then we, we are only, we are the only country really that allows the spouses of qualifying parents and grandparents to also be included in a CBI application. Um, so long as there is a showing that they are substantially supported by the main applicant or the main applicant spouse. So this is a, a, a very, uh, this is, we could say, a groundbreaking um, um, policy um, that the government has, the Dominican program has introduced um, because we understand the importance of family. We understand the importance of keeping families together. We, we understand the, the need for family members to continue looking out for each other. Yeah, it, it does seem you are being quite a trailblazer in that with some of those changes. They're, they're very interesting, and I think they will be interesting uh, to many of our readers here at Golf News uh, because here in the UAE and in other areas of the Middle East, uh, people do tend to have those large families where you've got multiple generations uh, living in the one house. So would you therefore recommend Dominica uh, as a nation for which relocation would be desirable for large families? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. No one in large families... For single people, um, for a husband and wife, or a husband and wife and, and, and one child, or uh, a uh, husband and parent, you know, we we welcome um, everyone, Dominica. And I believe that Dominica is is well suited to to receiving um, our, our friends and families for a number of reasons. You know, we look at life and we need three things essentially um, from a country a government. One. Uh, security and a safe place for ourselves and our families and for us to conduct business. Uh, two, a good education system. And three, a good health system. In respect to, to security and safety, um, we have minimal crime in, in Dominica. You, as a visitor to Dominica, you can walk the streets, um, you know, and ask questions for directions. Uh, if some, if you are seen walking, you very well have uh, somebody stop and ask you where you're going to, and, and they will certainly provide you a lift to, to take you to your destination. Um, you can go to our beaches and to our waterfalls with, with no fear of your safety. So we are a safe place for you to raise your family. Um, and, and Dominica, no doubt, is a very safe place. Two, in education, we have a very uh, robust education system, uh, an education system that responds uh, to the current needs of the society, the current needs of the world. And when our, our children um, get educated in Dominica, they can compete and succeed in any education system across the world. We have students in China. We have students in Russia. We have students in United States of America. We have students in Canada. We've had students in Australia, um, in, in Serbia. In, you know, so you, you name the countries. We have had small students um, go into these countries, into universities, performing well, and, and certainly even surpassing the, the level of um, success that many of the students from the own countries have. Um, and so our, our literacy rate is about 98%. Um, we have free education up to age 16. And we also provide um, substantial support to all our students to attain higher education, both nationally and externally. Um, in regards to our healthcare system, we are investing heavily on um, the improving the infrastructure. So as we speak, we have our, uh, our new national hospital under construction, which will be completed next year, God's willing. Uh, we're also building uh, a new hospital in the north, close, closer to the airport, um, to provide uh, for any emergencies in the event of any um, eventualities at the airport and, and in the health, in that health district. 
We are also modernizing our our um, primary healthcare system. We have been noted for having a very um, very good um, an excellent um, primary healthcare system. So we're building a number of new health centers, but that that is, that is on the infrastructure side. We also um, are introducing new services um, to our citizens and visitors alike. Uh, and also critically training people at all levels. You know, whether you're an orderly, whether you're a nurse or a pharmacist, um, a physician, a surgeon, we are providing you with the, uh, the training and access to, to, um, to training and, and new methods of, of treating patients. Um, so that we are, we are, we are, we're in a position where anything were to happen to any of our citizens or visitors, we're in a position to support. But and just to show you, um, just to draw to your attention a point. I mean, we're in the middle of this pandemic, um, this global pandemic of COVID-19. We are a small country, um, but we have not had one death as a result of COVID-19. Wow. Everyone, every one of our, our citizens who contracted this, this, um, this virus, um, recovered successfully. And, you know, they are, Patients with um, underlying health issues and they're high risk. And, and many of them in many countries have unfortunately um, um, passed on. We had a case, or two cases, but I'll reference one, an 85 year old man who contracted the virus. Um, he suffered from, he saw, he's suffering from diabetes, hypertension, he's asthmatic, and he's 85 years old. So, so, so that person would be in, in the high risk category. Um, and unlikely succumb to COVID-19. In the Commonwealth of Dominica, that gentleman um, was treated and he successfully recovered and his home um, um, with his family and his community. So, so it, and it speaks to the, the seriousness that we, we, we will place and the attention which we place on healthcare. Healthcare for all, because we also provide free healthcare to everyone who is 18 years and younger and everyone who is 60 years and old. Um, so in the next couple of years, we shall have universal access um, to free um, secondary and tertiary healthcare in our country. Primary healthcare is free, but secondary and tertiary, in the next couple of years, we shall have universal access. Well, I think that comes uh, as probably a lot of comfort to people who are thinking of, of their grandparents and their elderly relatives. They would be fascinated to hear you speak about that, Prime Minister. But for those who would like to visit Dominica, uh, without necessarily establishing a permanent home there, uh, Dominica has created an ever more refined tourism brand. So what would you say would be some of the key features of Dominica that attract people from all over the world that want to come to your island? Well, first of all, you know, we pride ourselves on, on nature. You know, it, it's a place where you can certainly um, rejuvenate yourself, um, uh, find yourself again, because sometimes we are so busy with work um, that we, we, we forget that there's another part of life, which is to, to enjoy life. And I think Dominica, will pro Dominica provides that opportunity. I mean, we are known for waterfalls, for rivers, for lakes, for hot springs. Um, you know, we are one, we, we, we have a national trail, what we call it the Waitikubi National Trail, which traverses from the south of the country all the way to the north of Dominica, um, in, in a natural setting, unspoiled, untouched. Um, and we also, pro um, are very much, um, concerned about the environment. This is why we promote, uh, more ecotourism, um, building the tourism brand. Uh, around the environment, um, seeking to preserve and to conserve and conserve the environment for future generations to enjoy, especially in the time when we speak about climate change and the need for us to reduce some carbon emissions in the atmosphere. Dominica um, pr has prided itself um, at being a major um, protector and at the vanguard of protecting uh, the environment um, for, for for many generations um, prior and many generations to come. We also um, have a number of, of luxury properties that we have um, been able to develop. We have um, the, one of the oldest European brands, um, Kempinski in Dominica, the five-star hotel that provides a, a wide range of amenities um, and, and, and certainly tailors as the services to um, their varying guests. 
Um, so, so, and of course, we had the Secret Bay. The Secret Bay has received a number of accolades um, internationally for the quality of their service, the, 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 the high rankings they receive for the, for their property. It's another area, Jungle Bay, uh, also, which is, which is financed by the Citizenship by Investment Program, uh, provides an ecotourism friendly environment. Uh, and so, so then the number of things that people can enjoy in, in, in Dominica, even if you don't want to relocate permanently. So let us not waste our monies and go to places like Paris and Denmark. And, you know, we, 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 we've been to places, they're, 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 they're similar to where we live in, in these metropolitan countries. And, and so if you already want to, to, to have a, a renewed life, then Dominica is a place to be. And, you know, you can access the hot springs at 2 a.m. in the morning or, or, or 5 a.m. in the morning or, or 11 p.m. And, and, and not be fearful uh, about your safety. So, um, you know, book your flights. And if you're talking about in a time when COVID-19 is, is so rampant in so many parts of the world where lockdowns are, 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 are always on the horizon, um, you, you're, you're fearful for your children to go out to play or go to school, come to Dominica. We, in fact, are reopening schools this September. You know, every, every one of our children will be returning um, to school in September. Uh, because we believe that it is safe for them to do so, and there are no major risks uh, of their contracting um, COVID-19 while in the classroom. So, and, and we are one of the few countries that have contemplated this and are in fact going to implement it. Well, that's something very impressive uh, that you're at that situation where all students are returning to schools. I know many parents here in the UAE have got uh, children going back to school tomorrow and they're doing the juggling of working from home and the kids working. And, you know, I think that, that they'd be very envious of being in a situation where uh, you've been able to keep COVID-19 under control. But uh, you just mentioned before the Kempinski Hotel chain. That's very well known here in the UAE from having some of the best hotels. And many of those resorts and the development projects uh, you mentioned that a part of the reason that people like to travel to Dominica on the back of the ecotourism and, and the nature and the hot springs that you have. But in those, those hotels you mentioned, uh, many of them have been sponsored at least in part by Dominica's CBI program. So to what degree is your government committed to this program? Well, we're very committed to it, um, very committed to it. And, and this is why I avail myself to such events um, to be able to be quizzed by you on our program um, and to educate the, the public about our program. So from the from the highest level of the government of the country, um, we take this very seriously. Uh, our citizens appreciate the importance of the CBI. Uh, the CBI has been a, a lifeblood of, of source of non-tax revenue for various developmental projects, investments in education, in health, in agriculture, uh, small business development, um, tourism, you know, you name it, the CBI certainly plays a very important role. It, it plays a role in the payment of our external debt um, and, and, and containing our, our, our external debt or national debt. Um, in respect to these hotels, we've been very careful, my friend, about the number of projects and the type of projects which we give consideration to. Had we um, given consideration to all projects that would have been submitted to us, we will have about a hundred of them. Also, we've been very careful um, one, to protect the investor and to ensure that the investor's investments are protected um, and you don't have somebody running away with somebody's money. Um, but also we wanted to ensure that the, the projects um, fall within our whole ecotourism um, friendly um, um, approach. And so we have, as I said, the Kempinski uh, that was successfully, com successfully completed. We have the Anarchy by, um, by the Marriott that is under construction and construction will come to a, an end in 2021. We have um, uh, Hilton by Curio, um, which is also a major, major development, a five-star development. Um, the, all of its superstructures are completed. They've been doing no um, fit-outs um, on this property. We have uh, Jungle Bay that was completed and, and Jungle Bay used the, the, the COVID-19 period to complete construction. So they now have in excess of 80 um, villas, uh, 80 rooms available um, to the public and they'll be reopening in October of this year um, to, to the guests. Uh, we have Secret Bay, which is as I indicated a, a renowned um, uh, property that has received a number of international accolades. Uh, we are doing um, about um, 40 
uh, villas with them. They have started construction. They will have a, a number of villas completed by December of 2020 and, and, and extend these um, properties to guests. And, and so, so all of our properties so far have been successful, thank God, um, because we have carefully selected them and given careful consideration uh, to these projects. And, and I can give the, the existing investors and prospective investors the confidence that um, we take these projects very, very seriously. And in respect to our CBI as well, you know, you are a citizen of Dominica, you are a citizen of Dominica. There, there's no real differentiation. You know, we, we value the citizenship. Yes, the, the investment is important, but we also want to ensure that um, we do not play games with um, prospective applicants or prospective investors. You know, we, we value them and we protect them. So our constitution, and you know, we're part of the, of the common law um, system, um, so people are protected. People's properties are protected by law. The government cannot nationalize or expro expropriate your properties. Um, you, you, you have um, ownership to these properties. And if government were to acquire, it must compensate you with market value prices. Um, so, so the number of, of, of um, benefits to investing in Dominica, and in, in respect to your question, uh, we value very much the CBI, um, but at the, but just to make a point, my friend, very importantly, at the center of our CBI program is a robust due diligence process. We, we value this because um, if we do not maintain the security of the CBI program, then it, it will come to naught. And this is why we always um, call on our stakeholders, the, the developers, the, the agents, the promoters, to always promote our program um, in keeping and in respect of the laws of Dominic and the law governing the CBI program. And so we do not compromise at all on the CBI program. In our case, we would prefer have a program come to an end um, instead of engaging ourselves in, in any nefarious activities that could bring the whole industry into disrepute. Uh, and so we value very much the due diligence process. And in some cases, we, we, we do, um, um, we go beyond, above and beyond uh, to do checks on our applicants to ensure that those who are applying for Dominican citizenship are bona fide individuals and can stand the test of scrutiny um, by any international agency or country. Well, I think a lot of investors and also people that are looking for citizenship would welcome that you've got that right balance uh, between the construction and also maintaining uh, the natural beauty from ecotourism. I think a lot of people would be very relieved to hear that you certainly still have that vision to strike the right balance, which is always so important. Uh, if I can ask you, Prime Minister, uh, based here in the UAE, how would you describe your country's relationship with the UAE and what would be your ambitions in the future for that relationship? I think if I were to use one word to describe it, I would say excellent. Um, we have we have great relations with the UAE. It's a country we, we value very much, the friendship um, that we have engendered between ourselves. Um, the UAE has been a very strong partner to Dominica in a number of areas, especially renewable energy. Um, they are assisting with a, with a, um, with a major battery storage for um, solar, solar energy. Um, they've also helped us in healthcare. Uh, they provided us technical assistance in a number of other areas. And this is one of the reasons why we have decided to um, establish an embassy in Abu Dhabi um, for a number of reasons. One, to, to say to our friends in the UAE and to demonstrate to them how serious we are um, with regards to the relationship that we have developed over the last several years. And also to, to promote um, trade and economic opportunities uh, between the UAE and Dominica and um, to provide services to our citizens who are resident in the UAE. Um, there are a number of things that we can learn from the UAE in terms of their experiences, in terms of, of their policies, and we, we, are, we are looking at those. Um, they have shared some of us. And, and so the relationship is excellent. Uh, I believe in, in the years to come, um, it will certainly be deepened and strengthened. And, and, and no doubt, um, I, I can say that um, you know, we have, we have very, very, very good relations with the UAE. 
and we appreciate the the leadership of, of the UAE. And this is why we always say to our citizens that we have to respect the, the constitution and the laws of the UAE. They have been good to all of us um, who are resident there. They have created opportunities for many of us who, re, who are resident in the UAE. And and the least we can we can do is to show appreciation and respect for the leadership and for the good people of the United Arab Emirates. And 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 so our relationship no doubt will, will strengthen and deepen in, in, in the years to come. Well, we look forward to welcoming you for your next visit, Prime Minister. I think that'd be great to uh, continually focus on that relationship that you do describe as excellent. But uh, focusing on Dominica again, I understand now for three consecutive years, Dominica has secured number one, not even number two, but number one for best CBI program in the Financial Times CBI index. This is an amazing feat. How have you and how has Dominica managed to consistently be in this number one position? Well, you know, we, we are flattered by this um, and we are grateful that there are independent arbiters who could who have examined our program and have declared Dominica's program to be number one. Um, but with that accolade, we don't sit on our laurels. We don't get complacent. We don't um, uh, dilute our, our high standards. Whenever um, we are criticized, whenever, whenever we are um, promoted as being number one in this case, we seek to even do our own introspection as to what else can we do to enhance the, the program? What else can we do um, to minimize the risk associated with, with this program? How else can we make it more attractive? How can we make it um, more respected in the international community? What can we do to increase our cooperation and collaboration with our various international agencies and countries which, who from time to time may have concerns about our programs or the industry as a whole? So we do not, we not, do not, we do not become complacent. We, we appreciate this um, accolade because it, it, um, it reinforces the points that we have made about our due diligence. Uh, because when you look at this report, it, it, it's, it references very highly the due diligence processes um, that we take. We're very efficient, but we do not compromise on the due diligence processes. Um, very soon we shall introduce this year actually um, the biometric passwords. Um, we have we have issued a contract to a Canadian firm uh, to supply us with these passports. We'll also be improving the security of our uh, um, CONs, a certificate of naturalization, um, to protect people's um, um, and personal data, but also to protect the security of our country and the security of our friends in international and regional communities. So, so we're very grateful by this, uh, by this um, commendation, and um, no doubt it, it reinforces in our mind um, um, how important the program is, but how important it is, all, it, it is it is for us to maintain the high standards and the high integrity that we that we have maintained. So it's not only we who are saying that we have a robust program. Um, a program that values due diligence, but international independent arbiters are saying that. And this is important, especially when you have so many negative um, propaganda about various programs, um, uh, you know, banded on social media and, and various um, um, news outlets. I, I think these are, these are good publications to have that people could read and, and people can recognize that the CBI industry it is really an important industry. And countries like Dominica are, are, are making a very important contribution to international peace and, and international prosperity. You know, when you have so many families, so many families, um, so many individuals who are born stateless, I mean, why should anybody in this world be born stateless? You know, we should, we should all belong to a country. We should all belong to a state. We should all belong to a, a region. And there are people who have had to leave their countries, not because of their own I'm doing, but because of circumstance. They, we all want to find peace um, for our families and ourselves and to ensure that our children can grow up in a safe environment. You know, um, and then when the Lord calls us, we, we can know that we have left our children in, in a very comfortable environment and safe environment. And, and so the contribution that country like Dominica is making and St. Kate's and Grenada and, and Antigua and Barbuda and St. Lucia, you know, I believe, truth be told, we should really be given some kind of commendation by the United Nations, for example, you know, and, and the UNHCR, 
<laughs> you know, um, for, for what we're doing for humanity. Yes, there is an economic benefit to it, but one must not underestimate our contribution to humanity and to global peace and, and, and global prosperity. So, so we welcome the, the, the rating, the third year in a row, um, you know, but this is not going to cause us to become complacent at all. We, we have to um, press on, we have to seek the advice and the guidance on how we can make our program as watertight as possible uh, to ensure that there are no negatives associated with our program. Well, you make some great points, Prime Minister, and it's no surprise that you're number one, number one after three years when you still have that, you know, that gratitude and you're not, you're not resting on your laurels. There's constant growth uh, for both uh, the people, uh, for the economy of Dominica. So it, it really does put you in an enviable position and a position that, as you said, should really be recognised because uh, that is a tremendous achievement uh, to receive that number one position uh, for three years in a row. Um, at this stage, I, I will thank you very much for your time. Uh, you've made some excellent points where you talk about you know, the security that you have for the citizens when you talk about, the, you know, how good the education is um, for students and, and for families, but also the healthcare system, uh, including your tremendous uh, results in the fight against COVID-19. So I thank you to you, uh, Dr. The Honourable Roosevelt Skerritt, the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of Dominica. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you very much for um, inviting me. And um, whenever you wish to, to invite me again, let me know. Uh, I, I'll be obliged. Uh, I want to thank you, and of course, I want to wish um, all of your guests uh, a wonderful evening. And, and may God bless um, the United Arab Emirates, may God bless the world, and our common for Dominica. And uh, I pray to God that we shall overcome uh, this pandemic and, and, and uh, sooner rather than later. Wise words, Prime, Prime Minister. Thank you very much, especially early in the morning in Dominica. So I thank you as we move on to His Excellency Emmanuel Nathan, who is the head of the Dominican uh, Citizen uh, Investment Unit. I'm, I'm glad we've got you on, uh, His Excellency, because uh, we were looking at your profile picture for a long time and I thought, you know, we were just going to look at your good looking picture, but you, you're just as good looking in person. <laughs> well, you, you, you've mastered it. Good to have you on this afternoon. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening to you. Good evening to listeners. Uh, good morning, uh, Prime Minister. I thought pray for you were excellent as usual. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. Thank you. Look, you know, you know, we really, are, really, we really are in an amazing time, uh, certainly for uh, Dominica and this CBI program. That's the Citizenship by Investment program we're discussing today. For anyone who is just joining our webinar, now it was only last month in July 2020. This was an exciting time for the Dominica CBI program as he had some brand new regulations that were gazetted. Now, uh, His Excellency, could you tell us some more about how these new regulations impact the way an applicant can include family members in their application? Well, Keith, as the Prime Minister referenced earlier on, in Dominica, for us, the family is uh, the key to who we are as a society, as a people. Therefore, when we were faced with challenges of COVID, we, we took some time off and uh, we reflected and we thought, what could be our contribution uh, to humanity? What could be our contribution to the world, to the CBI program uh, globally, to the migration program globally? And uh, we thought what we could do was to allow families to feel more secure, to feel closer, closer uh, to each other. As a result, we made some changes to amend the regulations to ensure that more members of the family can be kept together by the CBI program. So uh, one thing which we did really was uh, to ensure first and foremost that you could add your siblings to your application. So you could, uh, very often in families, you, ha uh, you have a family main applicant, but there's always a, a brother or a sister who is older, who has been more successful and who takes care of the rest of the family. So once you have uh, uh, siblings uh, under 25, then you could, you could add those. So right now, uh, you could add your children once they are under 30. We have removed the, the qualification, qualification that they must be uh, uh, at, at the university. We have allowed that uh, also your parents uh, could be added irrespective of their age. Your grandparents could also be added, both grandparents of the spouse and uh, of the main applicant. We felt that uh, as a unit, it is better facing tough times, challenging times when we stick together. And our contribution to the world was to ensure that we do the best that we can to allow people to stay together. So you could, uh, you could add your children once they're under 30, you could add your parents, your grandparents, you could add the parents and grandparents of uh, the spouse of the main applicant, 
uh, and we just ensure that now they have to be dependent or substantially dependent uh, on the main applicant. So it is we made it a bit easier for the main applicant to apply for for uh, all of these people. We believe that it is important that children and siblings uh, can be uh, biological as well as they could be adopted. So if you have an adopted child, then you could add that child as well. If it's your biological child, of course, uh, it goes without saying. And in Dominica, you know, uh, citizenship is hereditary. So it means, therefore, that you could pass on your, your citizenship to any child you have after you have become, once you're a citizen of Dominica, any child you have thereafter qualifies to be a citizen as well. Uh, I mentioned earlier on that we moved the age requirements for parents uh, and grandparents because we believe what, uh, keeping the family together, as I, I, would re I would reiterate, the importance of family and the importance that families stay together as a people. So really and truly, it, uh, our amendments to the regulations in July was our contribution to, you know, to humanity. It was our contribution uh, to ensuring that we stay safe, that we feel comfortable when we're going through challenging and uh, difficult times. Of obviously, uh, the challenges that we face now as a people globally with the COVID situation is a very tough and very rough one. And we felt uh, the more comfortable we can let our families feel, the closer we can keep our families together, then uh, the better we would be as a people. So this has been our contribution uh, uh, as we reflect. Because uh, very often people look at, at programs and look at things that they could do to, to maybe make more money, to attract more people. We believe that this program, as the Prime Minister mentioned, is not just uh, a program that brings in money. It's a program where we make our contribution to humanity. And uh, in doing so, we find ways and means of improving all the time. So you mentioned our, our success in, in, from the Financial Times uh, being number one. I believe it is uh, those soft touches that really put us ahead, uh, ahead of the game. Because we listen to uh, our, our citizens, we listen to our investors, our stakeholders, and we make the changes that affect the people. Our program reaches out to the heart and soul of the people who, we, who invest in our program. We embrace all our citizens as the Prime Minister mentioned, whether you're a bond citizen or you're a citizen through the program, there's no differentiation in our constitution to a citizen of Dominica. A citizen is a citizen is a citizen. And as the Prime Minister spoke about, you know, the importance of family is so strong, which, which, you, you've, mentioned, uh, which you've mentioned there. And, you know, for anyone who is here in the UAE, uh, that's comfort listening to, because here we have the same position with so many generations living under the one roof. So His Excellency, I'll, I'll just follow up that, that with just one more point. Under these new regulations, what would happen, say, if I moved to Dominica and I became a citizen, uh, but then I, you know, had a child or I married, uh, what would the situation there, would, would they still be included? Under our program, whether you're the main applicant or you're, you're a dependent, once you're a Dominican, when you have a child after you're a Dominican citizen, that child qualifies to be a citizen of Dominica. And for that, we do not charge. We, there's a processing fee of $500, uh, and that is all that would, that would be paid uh, to get the necessary papers. It's a processing fee of $500. There's no charge to become a citizen. So once you are uh, already a citizen, any child you have thereafter would qualify to be a citizen as well. If you get married uh, after your citizen, then uh, we would do due diligence on your spouse, of course, but uh, you would have to pay the fees of $75,000 for your spouse. If you were married before, uh, and you were already married, and your spouse, did, uh, you did not put in your spouse in the application, then of course uh, you could add that person, but we could, we could discuss that uh, a bit later. Now, I've got one situation which I wanted to raise with you. Uh, what would happen if, say, I had a family member who could have qualified under the program, uh, but I didn't add them to my application, you know, when I was first applying? What is the situation? Can I then add them at a later date? And the answer to that, that uh, in short, is yes. We would allow you to add your family members. Uh, if sometimes people would hold back on other members, it could be because of, of the availability of cash at the, at the time, or it could be because they wanted to see how well these things work. And uh, what we would do, we would allow you to add your qualified dependents at the time of application uh, at a later date. If you do so within a year of you applying and getting citizenship, then uh, you, the cost for adding them would be the same as if you had added them uh, on in the original application. In other words, if you uh, are married and you applied for yourself uh, and you want to add your wife after, if you do so within uh, one year, you would pay uh, $50,000, which would be the amount that you would pay for your spouse, or your child fee, $25,000, etc. If you uh, wait 
more than a year after after you have become a citizen, then uh, you would pay an additional twenty five thousand dollars extra per dependent. So there's an incentive for adding your dependents in the application or within a year of the application. Of course, if you wait uh, more than a year and we have to go back, we may have to go back to due diligence, and therefore there may be additional costs for due diligence fees as well. But the important thing is that as uh, an applicant. You could add your family, your dependents, meaning your, your children once they're under 30, your parents, your grandparents, your brothers and sisters once they are under 25 and unmarried without children. If you add a child, your brother or your sister, your sibling who are under 18, it is $25,000. If you add a sibling who is uh, over 18 but uh, under 25, it would be $50,000. Of course, if you're going to add uh, a sibling who is under 18, then you would need the consent of the parents or those who, who are legally uh, responsible for uh, your brother or sister. So it is important to know those things. But importantly, you could add them, and we give you this, we give you up to a year to be able to add all the members, uh, all your dependents who would have qualified as dependents at the time that you were citizen or you became a citizen of Dominica. That's some very good advice, His Excellency, because I know if I was to move to Dominica, my sister wouldn't want to initially go, but then she would see the photos of how good life is. She would then want to want to be added to the application later on. So I think a few families may be in that same position. Thank you to everyone who is currently uh, watching our latest uh, Golf News webinar. We are discussing the Citizenship by Investment Program with Dominica, and it's an amazing program. It has been number one ranked by the Financial Times uh, for the past three consecutive years. And there were some changes uh, that were gazetted in July 2020, which we want to discuss about, to discuss with you further. Are there any other changes that were made that are family friendly in nature? Yes, when we looked uh, at the fees that we charge for dependents, we felt uh, there was, there seemed to have been an abnormally with the cost of adding your spouse. So before, if you're a citizen, you want to add your, your child, it's $25,000. You want to, now you could add your, your sibling, or your parents, grandparents, it's uh, $25,000. But we were charging uh, 75000 for adding your spouse. So we, we felt that that was a little uh, unjust. So we have reduced the, the, the cost of adding your spouse by $25,000. So it means therefore that now you could add your spouse for $50,000 instead of $75,000. As a result, a family application a family of up to four would have been before $200,000. At present, it would be now $175,000. So uh, we have ensured that we did that to make the, again, to keep the family together. Uh, and we felt that uh, there was some kind of injustice in terms of the cost of our spouse. So we have reduced that. So uh, that, that has been very important for us. It's more affordable for your family. It's more uh, affordable, uh, more encouraging to uh, keep the family unit together. And that for us, of course, uh, is important. So you could add your, your child, you could add, you could add uh, your parents, grandparents, irrespective of age. You could add your children up to 30, once, uh, even though they are at university or not. And then, uh, you, if you, of course, there's one other person. If you, you could add uh, any dependent you could have who, who is mentally or physically uh, retarded or, or unable. But there's no age limit for that person. So if you have a sick brother or sister uh, or a sick child, it, it doesn't matter whether he's five or whether he's 45, you, you would be able to add them as dependents as well. Again, uh, uh, giving credence to the, uh, what the importance we place on the family. We have to take care of those who are less fortunate among us and those who are more vulnerable am among us. And uh, as a country, as a people, we sincerely believe in that. The Prime Minister has articulated that on many, many occasions. Uh, the Prime Minister has put in a number of programs uh, in Dominica to take care of those who are less fortunate people, like, like our Yes We Care program, we take care of the people who are uh, elderly, who are left, uh, left alone, whose children went away. Uh, we send people to take care of them at the homes. Or NEP program or National Employment Program, providing job experience for young people. There are a number of things that we do. Uh, and basically, it, it speaks to who we are as a country. It speaks to who we are as a, as a people. And that for us is very, is very important. Well, you've spoken just then and also the Prime Minister in regards to just how strong uh, family focus is and how family friendly uh, the program is. So it's no surprise uh, that your uh, CBI program has been ranked number one for so many years. But uh, going further into it, His Excellency, uh, in addition to family friendliness, what are some of the other key features that set the Dominican CBI program apart from other similar programs that are available? I think uh, the joy and the beauty of our program is in the simplicity of our program. 
an applicant is given a choice to choose uh, from two in two investments one a direct government contribution or to an investment in a pre-approved government real estate however unless he or she receives an approval in principle providing the applicant with a high degree of certainty then we do not ask you to make any payments uh, upfront. additionally the applicant need uh, not preoccupy himself with time consuming traveling uh, or, or, or whether you have to go to interviews or, or whether there's a language test etc we try to make our program as simple as possible so that our applicants can uh, apply be simple and move forward our agents are given the opportunity to uh, apply online electronically on our portal whether so in time like now when we have the covid situation when our country was locked down as we were for a while uh, after uh, in a few, a few months ago we could do our work from our home when we had a hurricane a few years ago we could do our work from anywhere uh, in the world because it is simple it is efficient and uh, we we do not we do not consume too much time in in uh, going through your application so efficiency is is uh, our key word again simplicity efficiency uh, is important for us so we approve our our uh, applicants within uh, three months generally within three months so our, our investors who we consider as vip do not have to wait too long vip clients are used to be treated in a certain way and we have acknowledged that we recognize that and we assign a member of staff to every applicant on application so that person continues to get a vip treatment as he or she would have done uh, operating from his own company or from his own home or from his own town wherever he or she resides the importance of vip is uh, paramount to us and of course uh the the applicant when he applies to dominica he's aware that this program has been around from 1993 Longevity of our program uh, demonstrates clearly that we are a program that's successful. We know what we're doing. You could invest. You know, we have seen uh, people uh, becoming citizens. Their children become citizens. Their grandchildren. Their children, children, children. And it goes on and on and on. So the, in other words, uh, longevity, uh, we have proven and, and stood the test of time. Our investors know that. Our agents know that. And that, I believe, is paramount uh, to the success of our program as well. Yeah, His Excellency, that's that, that's a that's a tremendous point. You know, there, there's a reason a lot of businesses can be in business for so long, and that's because they're successful. And when you point out that you've been around since 1993, uh, it's no surprise that when you have those key pillars of simplicity, uh, that you've only got the three month waiting period, which can you know means so much to so many people when they are applying for programs like this, it really is no surprise that you rank number one uh, for so many years. And the Dominican CBI program because of it is, is always associated with such a high level of due diligence. So would you be able to just tell us a little bit more about how this due diligence process that is applied to each application that comes in? Of course, uh, I believe that the Hatton Suit of our program stand, uh, is really our, our commitment to due diligence. You could have a program to be successful, to be around for a long while, uh, the global community has to ensure that uh, there is solid due diligence. And because of that, we are able to expand the number of visa-free access uh, globally. So uh, three, four years ago, we had access to 120 countries. Today, we are up to uh, 140 countries, and we're counting. We have added places like Russia. We, are, we have signed uh, with, with, with China. We added Brazil. We're working on a number of countries uh, in Africa, uh, in Europe, etc. So, and that's because... Our applicants and our process ensures that due diligence is important. We have normally four tiers of due diligence for our program. First and foremost, we don't accept applications directly from an agent, from uh, an investor. It must go through an agent. And yeah. that agent must fill out a know your client uh, uh, form. And must submit with the application a world check from one of, of the recognized uh, global check. Uh, and there are many of them around Thompson Reuters, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on. They must know the client, fill out that form. They must submit to us uh, a world check from one of the recognized uh, world check programs. When that comes in, the first thing we do, we would send out uh, information from the application to our regional security, our joint regional security system for ensuring that they check all the names, all the applicants, both main applicants and dependents through global security checks with international partners. That is important for us. So that goes out on day one. Then our staff would go through the application, and our staff have been trained uh, in anti-money laundering uh, and in many other programs to ensure that the people who, we, who are applying 
are in fact uh, people who we want to we want to uh, and we would welcome as citizens of Dominica. We sent out the application then to one of four due diligence firms, and we have contracted the best due diligence firms in the world who do due diligence for the largest financial uh, agencies. We choose firms from the UK uh, and from the US mainly, and they must do for us an enhanced due diligence. They must do a boots on the ground due diligence. They interface with people in the community where the uh, applicant grew up, where the applicant lives, where he or she uh, operates, uh, interview people in the field in which the applicant operates. So if you're into banking, they will get people from the banking sector who would know you and who would reference you. If you're into oil and gas, they would look at people in the area, into agriculture, whatever. They would get information from your specific field. They would check the schools that you went to, check people, interview people who, who went to school with you, because for us, due diligence is exceptionally important. It is after we have gone through those uh, phases, those four phases of due diligence, then we will give you a, an application and approval in principle to become a citizen of Dominica. Knowing uh, how challenging it is in certain countries to conduct due diligence, we do not believe that we could take the chance uh, to conduct due diligence uh, on certain countries, and therefore we have a limit of people in certain countries. For example, in uh, Iran, in North Korea, and in Sudan. We will not accept uh, applicants from those countries if you live and work in those areas because uh, it is very difficult getting the information, the thorough, in-depth information that we need and we require to, to guarantee that you are someone who we, who we will want to accept in Dominica and given a Dominican passport to travel the world. So if you live and reside in those countries, uh, we won't accept you. If you are from the, uh, one of those countries, but you live outside of the country for more than 10 years and you have no substantial assets in those countries or, or income coming from those countries, then we'll consider uh, your application. When we do so, however, we have to, you will have to pay an extra amount for even further deeper due diligence because our commitment to the global society is important to our program. We don't want to have someone into our program with a Dominican passport and then he or she is found wanting by anyone. So we take excessive care to ensure that the people who are allowed uh, to be citizens of Dominica and to travel the world, the globe with the Dominican passport, are people who are fit and proper to do so. So that for us uh, is always important. And again, due diligence, I would say, would be uh, if efficiency, if uh, experience, if, if, uh, if uh, longevity is uh, the heart and soul, is the lifeblood, the main aspect of our program is actually the due diligence. That is the heart, the heartbeat of our program. It lies with our due diligence process. Well, he made the point earlier on, His Excellency, that um, if you're not any good in business, you won't last very long. And your program has been going since 1993. And I think that what you explain there through your due diligence, you know, when you, when you work that with both the simplicity of it and the understanding of the concerns of people and their family, uh, it's no surprise uh, that uh, Dominica's CBI program is consistently uh, number one. Uh, His Excellency, I thank you very much for your time. I know it's early in the morning in Dominica, so I'll let you go on with your day in another day in paradise, which I'm sure you're having. And thank you very much for your time on the Golf News webinar this afternoon. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much for discussing Dominica. Uh, we welcome uh, all to, to uh, visit our website. Let's interact, let's interface. And again, we know we're going through the COVID uh, situation. So we wish all, uh, all the best. Stay safe, stay inside. Thank you very much. Good Thank you. That was His Excellency Emmanuel Nathan, who is the head of Dominican Citizenship by Investment Unit. And you heard from both His Excellency and also the Prime Minister about just how exceptional this program is. When you look at those pillars of security, of health, of education, when you see that this program has been around and is ranked number one for the last three consecutive years, uh, it really does provide you and your family with a tremendous opportunity as a part of Dominica's CBI program. So it has been a, a wonderful afternoon. Uh, thank you to everyone who has joined, who has logged in, uh, who has watched. Uh, it's been, well, a very a very informative session. Uh, thank you to everyone who has joined. Also, thank you to the team here at Golf News. It's always great working with you. Uh, my name is Lachlan Kitchen. Thank you very much for joining us. And we look forward to your company at our next Golf News webinar. Thank you. Woo! <laughs>